Hello everyone and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 240. Last night was the first episode where I had one of you listeners co-host the segment with me, and it was an absolute blast. I had an awesome time. I'm really excited to continue doing this moving forward. So to those of you who sent me emails and were interested in co-hosting a segment but didn't get selected this time, no worries. We're going to keep doing it every single month from here on out, the last day of the month, and it's a a bit of a fan appreciation type of deal, right? Because like I always say, without you folks, what's the point? You folks are the engine that pushes this car in my opinion. I just happen to have a big mouth and amplify what you folks are feeling, right? But at the end of the day, it's a lot of fun for me to interact with all of you. I have a blast doing that. I have a blast with the emails and when you contact me on Twitter, all of that stuff is, is, is fun for me. And a, a lot of times I'm learning from you. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, slips by. I'm only human. I can only, you know, process so much. And even though I spend tons of time on this case, there are things that slide by. And that's where these incredible listeners come in and they provide me with the emails about with links to articles, et cetera, et cetera. So the least I could do is give back a little bit by, you know, offering whatever little bit I can, having you come on the show, interact with me, talk to some of the other listeners. And if if you folks are pumped about that, then so am I. And according to the response, I guess everybody is pretty fired up about it because it was, uh, everyone was excited and I got a lot of good feedback. So we're going to continue to do it. If you're interested in co-hosting a segment with me, make sure you send me an email and put it in the subject uh, line that that's what the email is about. That way I can print the emails out, put them to the side, and then towards the end of the month, throw them all in the hat and pull one of them. And that will be who we, how we decide who will be co-hosting a segment with me. So thanks for all of the feedback. I'm glad everybody enjoyed the first episode. And I'd like to give a shout out to Jen, a.k.a. Trampella, for coming on with me. I really appreciate it. Now, on to our article for tonight. Tonight we have an article from lawandcrime.com. The author is Colin Kombacher. Headline, Judge orders Virginia Roberts lawyers to destroy their Jeffrey Epstein files bars Dershowitz from accessing them. A federal court in New York City has moved to further restrict access to long-sought-after secret files in the Jeffrey Epstein saga. In a Wednesday order, Senior U.S. District Judge Loretta Preska determined that attorneys for Epstein survivor Virginia Roberts had improperly gained access to many of those highly prized documents. Preska determined that certain discovery materials covered by a years-old protective order are not properly in possession of Robert's current legal team and thus must be destroyed. So they're saying that Cooper and Kirk, the legal firm that is representing Virginia in this portion of the case, received these files improperly and they should not have access to them. They're not saying that Virginia's case in general, her lawyers in general should not have access to these, by the way. They're not saying that Boys and Schiller and uh, the rest shouldn't have access, but that Cooper and Kirk shouldn't have access and that they receive these, um, these, uh, the, the, the documents improperly and thus they must be destroyed. Interesting. Preska determined that certain discovery materials covered by a years-old protective order are not properly in possession of Robert's current legal team and thus must be destroyed. That means that they can have copies of the documents in question. It does not mean that all copies of the documents will be deleted from existence. So the headline makes it out like these documents are going away, they're never coming back, no one's ever going to see them, and that's the end of it. When in reality... This portion of the case, these lawyers from Cooper and Kirk shouldn't have had access to them, but they did, so they must get them out of their possession and destroy them. I know, it's confusing. All of this legalese stuff is confusing, and I just barely understand it myself, right? I'm certainly not a lawyer, 
I'm certainly not uh, somebody who has ever uh, sat down in a law class besides, you know, criminal justice 101 in college. So I am not the, uh, the authority on any of this stuff by any means. But from where I'm sitting and from my perspective, that's what it looks like. It looks like the current legal team shouldn't have had access to those documents because you remember, Boys and Schiller had to take a, took a step back representing Virginia because of their situation with Dershowitz. So Cooper and Kirk have come forward and they are the ones who are the, representing Virginia now in this portion of the case. Additionally, the law firm of Cooper and Kirk must provide an affidavit detailing the steps that it took to destroy the materials. So the court is demanding that after the materials are destroyed, that they have a full detailing of how those materials were destroyed presented to Preska and the court. The ruling was also a setback for Harvard Law Professor and former Epstein attorney Alan Dershowitz, who has repeatedly sought access to the full tranche of Epstein files and discovery materials. If one good thing has come out of this, at the very least, Dirty Dersh, Mr. I Kept My Underpants On, will not have access to these files. You see, Virginia's current team might not have access to them, but in the original case, well, though that, that stuff still stands, right? This, this, uh, the information itself is not being destroyed, just the copies of it. But Dershowitz is not getting access to any of it, according to Preska. So this is a huge blow to Dirty Dersh over here. This is a big deal to him, it, and it's a big shot to the fruits. And while it sucks that Cooper and uh, Kirk must destroy the documents, it is most certainly a check in the win column from where I'm at that Dershowitz doesn't get his hands on the material. And Presco was pretty clear and straightforward with her ruling. Mr. Dershowitz's request is denied, the court ruled. At issue here are two separate legal controversies. One, a protective order issued in 2015 by Judge Robert W. Sweet in a since-settled defamation case between Roberts and Epstein's alleged groomer, co-conspirator, also a child abuser, and girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, and two, a more recent series of extant defamation back-and-forth claims between Roberts and Dershowitz. So that explains what I was talking about earlier if it was a little bit confusing. So the first case is the 2015 defamation case between Virginia Roberts and Ghislaine Maxwell. That is where the documents in question derived from. So the new lawyers in the case that is a uh, uh, Virginia against Dershowitz in the, in this new defamation case, Cooper and um, Kirk are the ones that are representing Virginia in this this instance because of the separate legal matter between Boys and Dershowitz. You see what Dershowitz is doing here? He's trying to make it convoluted on purpose. But these are the documents that are in question. So, what the judge said was that in the case of uh, Virginia Roberts and Dershowitz, nobody is using those documents. At least from what I can make of it, right? From from my... uh, watching of Law and & Order and staying at a, a Holiday Inn Express last night, that's what I can make from this so far. The Roberts v. Maxwell protective order is the major legal lock and key which has long protected the Epstein files. A process is currently underway for both sides to sift through those documents and eventually make many of them available for public consumption. All right, so this is a completely different situation as well. These aren't the documents that we've been talking about that Preska is litigating on right now and deciding how they're going to be distributed. This is a separate matter entirely. So let's just make sure that we keep that clear and we try and keep our ducks in a row here. I know it's a lot. There is so much. It is, it, it's very difficult to keep things in a straightforward manner here and to keep things in a, a, a way that they're not confusing, right? But This is basically three separate matters that we're discussing that are all intertwined. Dershowitz, however, recently requested unencumbered access to those files and more 
asking the Southern District of New York to modify and make him a party to the original protective order because it would help him in his ongoing defamation lawsuit. And leave it to Dirty Dirsch to think that he's going to make that move. He thinks he's still making power moves over here. So while I'm not very happy that Prescott decided that Cooper and Kirk wouldn't be able to have access to those files, I most certainly applaud her in smacking Dershowitz in the head here and letting him know that he's not going to bullhorn and bully the process. Such access was necessary, Dershowitz's attorney argued during the hearing last week, because Robert's attorneys in the defamation battle also have access to many of those documents covered by the Maxwell Protective Order. Judge Preska moved to rein in both sides, and that's basically what this is here for sure. This is Preska saying, all right, well, I'm not going to give Dershowitz access to these files under any circumstances, but to level the playing field, I have to make sure that Cooper and Kirk also do not have access to these files for their case against Dershowitz. The court was troubled to learn at the June 23rd oral argument that replacement counsel for Ms. Roberts, Cooper and Kirk had received from Ms. Roberts' former counsel, Boy Schiller Flexner, the Maxwell materials at issue in their entirety, the judge chidingly explained. As to explain how those materials came into the firm's possession, attorneys from Cooper and Kirk explained that they had obtained access to the materials because, because Miss Roberts retained them both to represent her in Roberts versus Dershowitz and to represent her in conjunction with the Boy Schiller firm in the Maxwell case. So they're saying that they were brought in as an extension of Boys and Schiller in the Maxwell case. So therefore, they should also have access, access to the, the information from the 2015 defamation case. That explanation didn't land well with the SDNY judge. Whatever Cooper and Kirk's in intentions in requesting and obtaining the Maxwell materials from Boy Schiller, the Maxwell Protective Order explicitly provides that 1. Discovery materials designated confidential cannot be disclosed or used outside of the confines of the Maxwell action and 2. That properly designated discovery materials may only be disclosed to specific groups of individuals, including attorneys actively working on the Maxwell litigation. Well, it, it does look pretty straightforward in that regard, right? If you're interpreting it from the, the bench the way that Preska is, it looks like her only option here is to go this way unless she wants to give complete access to Dershowitz as well. And again, I highly doubt that Preska wanted to go that route. Cooper and Kirk is sunk on either score, the judge reasoned. As a practical matter, the court would be surprised, shocked even, if Cooper and Kirk was not in some sense using the Maxwell discovery in its representation of Miss Roberts in her action against Mr. Dershowitz. And even, even if it was not doing so, Cooper and Kirk is not actively working on the Maxwell matter such that disclosure of discovery materials to it would be permissible under the plain terms of the protective order. And again, the cynic in me has to wonder if this was all part of Dershowitz's original plan. Dershowitz moved against Boys and Schiller, therefore making it improper for Boys and Schiller to represent Virginia in this portion of the case. So she moved to get outside counsel. And Dershowitz is so shrewd and he manipulates the system so well that a part of me has to wonder if this, just, just, this wasn't him playing 4D chess and setting it up so that he would eventually have these documents from the Maxwell case completely and utterly removed from the ongoing situation involving him. Presco went on to explain that the protective order only provides access to the preparation and trial of Robert's settled lawsuit against Maxwell, and since that law and excuse me, and since that lawsuit is inactive, Cooper and Kirk necessarily cannot play an active role in litigating them. The judge ordered the following course of action. Accordingly, the court concludes that Cooper and Kirk's possession of the Maxwell discovery materials violates the plain terms of the Maxwell protective order. 
All of those materials and any material including work product derived from the Maxwell materials other than the deposition of Miss Roberts and Maxwell shall be destroyed. Council should submit an affidavit de detailing the steps taken to do so. Furthermore, to the extent that it is doing so, Cooper and Kirk shall cease use of the Maxwell materials in its preparation of Miss Roberts' actions against Mr. Dershowitz. So they're saying for sure that those files that um, Cooper and Kirk received from Boys and Schiller will not be used in any capacity in the case of Dershowitz and Roberts' defamation suit by either side. Wednesday's decision present, presents a decidedly Kafka-esque turn of events for Roberts and her legal team's continued efforts. By, Presca, by Presca's newfound interpretation of the protective order, only Boys and Schiller can access the Epstein files on Roberts' behalf. But in late 2019, Boys and Schiller was disqualified by another Presca order from further representing the Epstein survivor which means Roberts herself just lost meaningful access to many of those documents. But the ruling made pains to both sides the access issue. So it is definitely another hurdle in the road for Virginia. It is definitely more uphill road to navigate. But I think that the access being denied to Dershowitz sort of mitigates how bad it is here, folks. And again, look, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just, from my opinion, from my first impression of this, without any more context to it than what we have here, I think that it is rough for, for Virginia, no doubt, that they lose access to, to using the files from the defamation case. But let's be real. We all know the juicy bits so far that are out, right? We know what's going on here, and so do the court and others. So... I think that from my first impression here, I think this is a bigger blow to Dershowitz than it will be to Virginia when all of the dust settles. But again, I am certainly not a lawyer. I don't know the inside and the outside of the, the legalese of all of this. I'm just like the rest of you from the outside looking in. This is my perspective and my opinion from how it seems to me. The court also notes, as Mr. Dershowitz's counsel did at oral argument on June 23rd, that it would be unfair for Miss Roberts' counsel to have access to the Maxwell discovery materials while Mr. Dershowitz does not, a footnote reasons. While the court rejects Mr. Dershowitz's request to modify the Maxwell protective order, it will not in the same breath force him, force him to litigate his actions with one arm tied behind his back. And again, I think that this is the court saying that we are under no circumstance giving Mr. Dershowitz access to these files, while at the same time not giving him any room to wiggle here and say the court is acting improperly. While expressing dismay at Robert's attorney's access to the Epstein files, Judge Preska employed an extended modern warfare metaphor to dismiss Dershowitz's request for those same documents. The sheer breadth of Mr. Dershowitz's request is worth reiterating. The order notes, he seeks all filings and discovery materials, including third-party discovery from the Maxwell litigation, a years-long affair with over a thousand docket entries. In other words, it is not a targeted strike that Mr. Dershowitz proposes, but a carpet bombing. And while Mr. Dershowitz, con Dershowitz contends it is obvious that Ms. Roberts has made relevant all of the, the discovery from Maxwell, he has not, beyond conclus conclusory assertions, demonstrated a congruence between the Maxwell action and his own that would warrant such an indiscriminate approach. So basically, Preska's telling him to pound sand. He hasn't made his argument, he hasn't made his case, and he certainly hasn't convinced her that he should have access to all of these files, so therefore his motion is denied. The order also reflected multiple parties' views that granting the request would probably blow up the overall unsealing efforts. This is important because what the court is saying here is if this, uh, this entire request from Dershowitz would basically go against the whole proceeding to get these documents from the defamation case in 2015 into the public. 
So I think that that, again, I think that's why the court and Preska ruled basically a neutral ruling here saying that neither side is going to have access to these files. I think this is why the, the motivation for the court and Preska is the, the, the proceedings in the other portion of the case where the hearing is happening right now. We're in the middle of, of hearing about and, and her deciding what will become public from the 2015 situation. Critically, the, the agreed-upon unsealing procedure can only work as it intended if non-parties are willing to participate. Handing over to Mr. Dershowitz all of the materials from, from Maxwell, which would, ne- which would necessarily include all of the sealed filings that are subject of the unsealing protocol, would threaten that balance. Non-parties may question the legitimacy of that process if Mr. Dershowitz, Dershowitz can obtain without any regard whatsoever for their interests, the sealed materials for the mere reason that disclosure would make mounting his defense and litigating his counterclaims against Mr. Roberts more convenient. So again, it is all about the other case when it comes to this situation. Preska is going to unseal these documents from the defamation case. Which one she's going to unseal? Well, that is the question. But the reason she's putting the kibosh on this, in my opinion, is to maintain the integrity of those dumps. The court will not risk collateral damage to the Maxwell unsealing process by modifying the protective order, Preska determined, finally retiring the metaphor. Law and, law and crime reached out to both Cooper and Kirk and Dershowitz for comment and clarification on this story, but no response was forthcoming at the time of the publication. And I think that pretty much sums it up from Preska's point of view. The court will not risk collateral damage to the Maxwell unsealing process by modifying the protective order, Preska determined. And I think that is what we should take from this uh, this ruling here, right? I think it's... Uh, uh, a situation where she ruled that neither party, Dershowitz or Robert's new lawyers, Kirk and Cooper, would have access to that Maxwell information because at the same time, she is busy getting ready to release information from that exact sealed case. So to preserve the integrity of that, she cannot have... Dershowitz having access to all of it. And the only way for her to get to that point was to just squash it all and make sure that Cooper and Kirk didn't have access to it, nor Dershowitz. And again, folks, that is just my perspective. Well, I, I am not a lawyer by any means. Just some guy sitting in his home studio hanging out in his pajamas, right? But from where I'm sitting, that's my perspective on what's going on here and why Preska made this ruling. Folks, we got a long way to go in this case. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. There are always moves and counter moves and then another move to be made when it comes to the legal portion of this case. And all that we can hope for is that these judges finally pull their heads out of their asses and that the lawyers who are representing the survivors continue to charge hard and search for justice. Because at this point, Nothing else is acceptable. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. You can find the link to this, uh, you can find the link to this article in the description box, along with the GoFundMe link if you would like to help out the podcast. All right, folks, we'll be back tomorrow morning with the morning update and we'll start all over again. I hope everybody has an amazing Wednesday evening.